this is how I color with no blend modes and like five layers. Disclaimer, I'm not professionally trained so I might mess up some terms. Okay, let's start. Treat your coloring process like potion making. I first learned colors by doing art traditionally. Learning how to mix paint from just the primary colors is probably why I don't have a saved color palette digitally. In my coloring process, there are four basic elements. The highlights, the shadow, the darker shadow, and ambient light or ambient occlusion. Question, does anyone know what the difference between ambient light and ambient occlusion is? Neither do I, please tell me if you know. Before learning colors, let's do a quick lesson on values. Let's pretend I didn't just learn this last week. What are values? The classic black and white, except not really. First, let's study values by studying this painting I made. Okay, this is too hard. Let's study values by studying paintings from Monet. What we can learn from here is that the foreground's values are usually darker than the background. Shadows usually have a dominant darker value and are often outlined by a darker value too. This doesn't just go for art, but also in real life. Here are some examples I took. You have to understand values before you try to understand colors. See this beautiful painting by Slavek Fidorchuk? If we translate it to values, it somehow simplifies everything. The blues and pinks both translate to a similar value. Why is that? I don't know. Quick lesson. Even if the saturation of these two colors are the same, their values differ. Turns out the blue ones are actually darker than the yellows. This is why it's easier to read blue on white rather than yellow on white. By the way, if you want to convert your colored drawings into values, you can just add a layer, paint it white, and change the blend mode to color. It's not the most accurate, but it's more accurate than changing the saturation. Okay, now that we know what values are, let's talk about why you clicked on this video to learn how to color. Let's use what we learned from values, foreground darker and background lighter. If you're lazy like me, then we don't have to apply what we learned for backgrounds. Step 1. What I like to do is start with a desaturated base color. Second step is shading. For the shading, I always move down my palette diagonally. Please do not go down the square or I will find you, I will find your family, I will find- Usually the distance from my highlights and shadows is this much. My highlights are more here on the left and the shadows are more saturated on the right. Your best friend in this stage and for the rest is lock transparency. You can use it for the actual object you're coloring, but I personally use it the most when it comes to the line art. Lock the line art layer and color it in to make it look less harsh. Then we add darker shadows. I put it in like the corners of stuff as an outline to the shadows we already put. This looks good in both value stages and coloring stages. Here's how I use them. Finally, I add ambient light in the shadows to make it less harsh. If you don't know what ambient light is, I explained it really well in a previous video of mine. Ambient light is the light that bounces on the... I... It's... Just google it. So now you're wondering, how do I add ambient light? This is my process. Pick a desaturated blue, dab some of it in the shadows, and color pick the color you made and polish it. Don't make your ambient light too light though, or else that'll defeat the purpose of your ambient light which is supposed to be around the same value as your shadow. Weird, right? Okay, now we render.
Okay, honestly, you can stop here, but here are some extra tips I could give. Number one, oversimplify. Lock out colors instead of being cautious. Do lighting studies to learn how to do this. A tip for oversimplifying is, don't be afraid to boost the contrast. To be honest, this is just a stylistic choice, but I like having shadows to be more pronounced and edgy. Okay, number two. For every part of your drawing, make a different layer just so it's easier to edit. For example, one layer for the hair, skin, clothes. Yeah, you get it. Number three. The environment influences the colors. Let's say you're outside on a beach and the sky is blue. Try to add blue on the highlights and in the shadows. Number four. Don't use pure black or white. I only use it for the eye shine. Remember, the sclera isn't white. Number five. Feel free to color pick from artists to study how they color. Try not to color pick from real photos though, because they'll confuse you a lot. And the last and most important step is to add back some of the saturation. Right, we started with desaturated bases. Well, now you'll have to balance it out. So let's say you're coloring skin or hair. Just put some more saturated colors on your base. Okay, to sum up everything, add a base color, add shadows, add darker shadows, add ambient light. And yeah, that's pretty much it to be honest. Bye!